everyone, True here and today I am going to give you an in-depth review of the new bright Snow White and fittingly I am sitting quite close to some snow, although admittedly it is melting, it still fits, so <laughs> let's jump right into the AI analysis. Let's check out the light version of Snow White first and uh, we can see that her hate actually rises when the team has six or more spirit, which makes sense because of her overdrive skill, um, 1.2 multiplier, not something uh, that is completely negligible. On the other hand, uh, it rises as well if she has the Snow White Bride Summon unlocked. This could actually help her because um, of the hold count plus she might actually be guaranteed a turn and so this way she could potentially draw some attacks but then transform and rejoin the battlefield at 100% HP with the hold count plus yet again unlocked. On the other hand if her hold count plus was already used things might get a bit dicey. In terms of skills and their weights it seems like Double Spirit will be a last resort and that is good because it doesn't deal any damage or helps your team except generating Spirit but 100 time units is quite a long time for that so definitely would prefer her to use Instant Restoration for example which she will probably do whenever it is possible. I mean it is a 1TU skill that produces one Spirit and is only locked for 50 time units. All her other skills take longer than that or she's actually transforming anyways. Um, so it makes sense that that is the highest weight for that skill and then Little Bright Garden, of course, something to use as well as her only damage dealing attack. And then there's also the weight 5.0 for Dark Transformation. I mean, this weight is basically useless in my eyes because if she can transform, she is forced to transform anyways. Uh, all her other skills get locked. So. This could be 0.1 weight or 100.0 weight and it is still all the same. And then we go to the snow black side and here things look a bit different, especially on the threat level side. We see a 1.2 threat level increase or multiplier when she has the possibility to um, do her blood revelry attack basically. And then there's a big multiplier, 1.35, if she has killed a unit and basically unlocked her other skill, the attack all skill with 500% damage to each enemy. I mean, logic-wise, it does make sense that that makes her a hunted target, but given that it is quite likely that she will have Moris in the back, the 1.2 will be already activated quite a lot and then the 1.35 multiplier on top of that is quite something and then of course if snow black bright summon unlocks so her light transformation basically um, there's another 10 percent weight that gets multiplied on top of that threat level as for the skill weights again the light transformation weight basically does not matter all the other skills get locked when she unlocks that transformation so she can only use that one. Blood Reverie looks low here with 0.3 but there is a big multiplier or modifier in the background there that rises that weight whenever she can actually use a good blood unit in the back so it's good that it's actually low if there's not a so good unit in the back but still it's not guaranteed I feel that she takes down a low HP SSR, for example, that was banished to the back of your reinforcements. So still a bit of a risky skill. Then again, whenever she enters the battlefield, she produces some worries that she can then immediately use, use for the blood revelry. So the risk is not that great. And then Little Dark Garden, of course, is a great skill. 1.5 weight, I mean, is high, but... Um, more on that Little Dark Garden skill later in the in-depth analysis section. And then Dark Summons, uh, obviously, kind of her fallback skill. Although if there are some low HP targets, maybe she will actually prioritize that. Sometimes it is quite a good skill and could also unlock her Little Dark Garden skill. So why not? This time I'm splitting my analysis into pros and cons and then basically my conclusion at my tier prediction at the end 
So let's jump right into the pros of this new Snow White first. And first thing is basically the instant powerful attacks in combination with her lightning entry. Whenever she comes from the reinforcements, her passives kind of make it work that she should almost every time be able to get off a very strong attack right away. On the one hand, if she transforms into Snow Black, she produces two Spirit, she produces two Moris, and she immediately gets the turn. So everything is set up for Blood Revelry. On the other hand, if she transforms back into Light Snow White, she doubles Spirit upon entry. So if your team has three Spirit and she comes onto the battlefield, she is also able to do the little Bright Garden straight away. Another possibility is that she enters the battlefield, doesn't have enough spirit, but most of your team is at max HP except one unit. She heals it with an instant restoration and then also unlocks Little Bright Garden in that way. Both of these attacks, 600% damage, quite powerful. But those are not her only strong attacks, especially if we look at the dark version of her. I quite like the dark summon skill, it's quick. It produces a spirit, it produces potentially Moris, other than that it could be a life flip, so she might be safe from that if she hits hold ground plus but doesn't have transformation unlocked yet, so immediately back to 100% HP, even if she doesn't have the spirit or the Moris to do a blood revelry. And it could also potentially unlock her savage skill, and that savage skill of course is the little dark garden which ignores damage reduction and stealth and attacks all the enemies with 500% damage. So this is quite a crazy skill, if she is able to use it. I mean, it does take a lot of spirit, for spirit to be exact, and some other conditions to be met. But on the topic of spirit, and let's stay on the pros side here, especially her light version is an absolute spirit factory. Double the spirit upon entry. Also another double spirit active skill. The instant restoration also produces spirit and the dark transformation also produces spirit. So that is definitely quite good. Another very good thing about her is the hold crown plus, of course. With the release of units like Ludmilla and Clarice, as well as Sleeping Beauty, hold crown plus is not as powerful as it once was, but it is still a very, very good survival tool. And with her skill set, it absolutely makes sense. In both her versions, she still has quite some opportunity to heal back. She doesn't have any other ways to restore the Hold Crown Plus though, except for the transformation. But that shouldn't be holding her back too much because these transformations are not so easily avoided. On the topic of transformations, it is a good thing, I think, that it is not like with other units, um, for example, Light Colin, who has light speed entry as well she doesn't actually step back from the battlefield so there is always a version of her basically on the battlefield if she's not forcibly pushed to the reinforcements and i think that is good because it um, means more presence on the battlefield that is uninterrupted another plus of her is i think that she still basically fits any team i mean you can probably use her everywhere, like with Cinderella, she can be used with burn, she can be used with poison, sleep. Of course she is a blood overdrive unit, but she is kind of self-sustaining in a way, so it should be easy to fit her anywhere. And that kind of universal usage is always a plus for a unit, especially because the meta might shift, but she might still be a unit that is usable when that happens. And another pro of her is also that she is basically both a support and a DPS unit. I mean, her instant restoration skill, extremely cool, let's say it like that. It is instant, one TU, and uh, huge heal and purify. So very, very good skill right there. And then, of course, the potential to double the spirit often. So that's definitely the characteristics of a good support there from Light Snow White. Quite similar to Light Mirai if I think about it, because Light Mirai also has that overdrain skill as the only means to deal big damage. And on the other hand, of course, Dark Snow Black 
has three very good attacking skills in my eyes. And if she isn't forced back to transform to Light Snow White, then if she gets a kill and can get off that little dark garden, she is an absolute force to be reckoned with and can potentially clean up an enemy team quite well. Now I just listed both support and DPS as a pro, but I think it might also be a contra. Because it is a bit unpredictable when she will be a support and DPS, you can't really plan around it. Sometimes your team might be more in need of a support, sometimes more of a good DPS, and she can't be both at the same time, really. I mean, yes, there is still the little Bright Garden skill, but let's just say things with her might be a little bit unpredictable. Another problem on the DPS side is that she is actually a blood DPS, which isn't that great right now in the in the meta. A lot of savage skills, a lot of deadly passives, so the Moris in the back are not always that great. She can't really ignore hold grounds or stuff like that, or negate hold ground like burn or poison. She also doesn't have all that much protection going on except for that hold ground plus. On the topic of the hold ground plus, I mean, kind of moving on to the forced transformation. I mentioned it before already. Every time she unlocks a transformation, she absolutely has to use it. She cannot use any other skill, which is definitely a nerf to her. Why is that? For example, when she unlocks the dark restoration, it would be pretty cool if she could still use the instant restoration before that, just with one time unit and then do that or get off another powerful attack, either as Light Snow White or Dark Snow Black. The case it is, how it is handled now basically means that when she gets the turn, she does the transformation, but she doesn't really win a turn. Yes, she gets the entry effect again and she immediately gets the turn, but before that she doesn't really have a good choice to use that turn. Although yes, the light transformation at least stuns an enemy and the Dark Transformation gives some spirit. But she loses her other skills basically, especially as a Dark Snow Black, if she already unlocked the little Dark Garden, it's gone, it is reset. Also, yes, she re-enters with the Hold Crown Plus, but if it was still there, then it's also kind of a shame. And Hold Crown Plus, of course, doesn't stack. While I just mentioned the little Dark Garden, there's a lot of, lot of conditions attached to it. It does cost for spirit, yes, but at first she actually needs to unlock it. So she needs to stay in her snow black form for long enough. Needs to get that kill. Needs the AI to actually use that skill if she can use it. Which seems a bit wonky sometimes from what I've seen so far. And on top of all that, yes, it's a super strong skill. But for example, it doesn't ignore counter, which is also a bit of a drawback. That said, given how many conditions it has, if you're not already running a super strong team and fighting a quite weak team, then I don't think we will see the Little Dark Garden a lot at all. Especially because of another drawback, and that is the high hate of Snow Black. I think it is quite high, and given that her condition to unlock the Light Transformation is actually another ally of you to die, this might become a problem because she might need protections by guards but if these guards die then she is light snow white again anyways and if she is not protected she really runs the danger of drawing in the attacks and then really has to hope that another ally dies first before she gets the turn and is vulnerable without the hold crown plus in the future and of course as i mentioned briefly before Hold Ground Plus is weak to sleep and especially to these new units that have been released recently. So a Cursed Sleep, for example, could counter her quite hard because the turn she still needs to be awake to use her transformation when she gets it. And if not, she will just stay at 1 HP and be very, very vulnerable if she is asleep. And another thing that just came to my mind is that because she has that instant restoration skill, she might be a popular target for being slapped by the enemies. Okay, so what's the conclusion from this? Uh, she is a bit tricky to use, I feel like. You need 
some team that works alongside her. She could be a very good support loop kind of with some other DPS that are around her and of course a guard, but uh, you wouldn't want to rely for her to really be using, for example, the little dark garden for the reasons I mentioned before. She can be super annoying because of that kind of loop and if you don't encounter a sleep team, it might be very hard for them to actually put an end to that and she could have a very, very long survival time that way and constantly push off some strong attacks either from her light or her dark version or support your team a little bit uh, or summon some Morris in the back. Because of her light speed entry, she can be used in many places in the arena but of course because of the high height of Snow Black having her unguarded is a bit of a risk. Also you have to consider that because of these constant loops of the transformation she will all the time reset her kill counts or her TU counts. So a lot of these classic weapon choices that you um, would usually use won't work for her. You really want to go for 100% HP weapons that could work really well for her because immediately she gets the turn when she enters with 100% HP and this way can profit or benefit directly from TU reduction or damage increase but I do think I would prefer TU reduction. She might be a bit questionable in wars at the end. I think she's a better arena unit to be honest and uh, my tier list is for arena after all so I am going to say she will have a tier ceiling of SS tier. Yes, I did say a lot of cons, but her big main weakness is actually sleep. And if you do not encounter sleep, she can be super, super annoying, especially if you have the right team around her. And because she can be used in a lot of teams, I do think she will be picked up quite a lot. That said, I don't see any world where she will ever enter the top tier in my tier list. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth analysis. I hope the audio was okay because I was recording outside. Thanks to Niceto and LensGS for the materials used in this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already to become a true carrot. It helps me out a lot. Let me know what are your first impressions of her in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.